Hey, Jonathan, uh, congrats on, on signing here. Uh, just quickly, um, you know, I was wondering if maybe you could give us a, a, a quick scouting report on, on the new secondary coach, Anthony Midget, and why he's somebody that um, you were eager to work with again here in Tennessee. I think being with him, you know, my previous six years in Houston, obviously we have a relationship. I think, you know, I've seen him come in there and obviously coming from college, made the adjustment, uh, had a chance to come in there with veteran guys and then had a chance to draft guys. So I've seen him develop guys also. And I just know his approach to the game and the passion that he has. You know, obviously he's worked uh, on the staff with Raven before. So I think um, both of those guys have the same mentality and, you know, want to play winning football and bring that mentality each and every day to the classroom and to the uh, football field, obviously. Uh, Jim Wyatt. Jonathan, I guess my question speaks to your longevity. What what still drives you, motivates you after 14 seasons, and what do you hope to bring to the Titans? I think just the love of the game. Uh, I think I do a great job of training in the offseason, taking care of my body, trying to stay ahead of the curve. You know, this league is always about getting young. And I think um, you have to do more. The older you get, some people think it's the opposite way. But um, I think it's the more you do, you have to stay ahead of the curve. And, you know, for me, um, just coming over here, just being a part of the secondary. Obviously, I faced these guys, you know, the past however many years, nine years I've been in Houston. Some of these guys wasn't here before, but a lot of these guys I'm familiar with their face and know some of them. And I think they're a proven group of guys, obviously. So um, I'm just coming to fill in what need be and just give my expertise and just, you know, help out along the way. You know, obviously we drafted some guys as well here. And I think, um, you know, it's my job is to show those guys the rope. You know, 15 years ago, I was a first round pick. You know, sitting in a lot of those guys' shoes, you know, um, a rookie, not understanding the playbook, just, you know, catching up with the day-to-day -day life of the NFL and just, you know, the rigors of the schedule, you know, compared to being in college. So just having that part, I'm just able to help those guys along the way. You know, the veteran guys we have here, just information throughout the week, anything that can help those guys play better, I'm here for them. Uh, Teresa Walker. Uh, welcome to Tennessee, uh, Jonathan. What is it about this uh, coaching staff in general, or was it Vrabel maybe that helped uh, attract you to the Titans? Uh, what is it you like about him as a head coach? I think uh, just having a history with him, um, knowing his mentality, knowing his expectations, obviously playing against the Titans, you know, in the division. I know what they bring as a football team. They made a great push last year. and have a lot of great players on this team. And I think he's doing a great job of managing that. And that's his biggest uh, skill set, I think, you know, that I remember about him being around him, the way that he manages guys. But at the same time, you have a high expectation level for you to do your job at the highest level and, you know, be a professional at all times. And I think that's what's great about him. And I think that's what makes him a great coach. Uh, Teron Davenport. Hey, Jonathan, welcome to, to Nashville. My question for you is in regards to leadership. Obviously, as a veteran player, that's something that, that you're going to bring to the table. But how do you do that in this type of uh, circumstance where you're only in virtual meetings? Um, you know, for me right now, I'm just kind of sitting in these meetings and, you know, more so paying attention and playing catch up. You know, obviously, I've been in Houston the past nine years, so I've been able to sit back and relax in a lot of these meetings to where I know the playbook and things. So for me, that's, you know, challenging itself. But obviously, um, I think we have a great group of guys to where they even explain it, you know, book and midget as a secondary coach. And then just all the other guys that we have in the room. And those guys have played a lot of football before and have a lot of experience. So just having that and, and bringing me in the room, those guys just been helpful in the meetings, you know, everybody's putting input in. And I think when you have a secondary like that, I think it's better for everybody overall, just because, you know, you have each guy pushing one another, but at the same time, he's looking out for the other guy's best interest. Uh, Terry McCormick. Jonathan, I guess with all this going on, with the off-season program kind of being different with the COVID-19 and all that, how much uh, does it help that you have a familiarity with uh, both the secondary coach and Mike Brabel as you start to learn this defense without actually being there and doing it? Um, I think, you know, for me, just being able to be around the guys, you know, be some of the guys, listen to those guys, see the way they interact in the meetings the way they handle themselves. I think that's the biggest part about it. I think, you know, me being a professional, it's my job first and foremost to understand the playbook and get that down. So I think with us having this extra time with the um, COVID-19 going on now, you know, I have more than enough time to get into the playbook to study. Obviously getting out there on the field and moving around in front of guys, things change. 
And, you know, you have to speed up your uh, memory process a little bit. But I think just taking advantage of this time, you know, having a chance to zoom in with the coaches and ask more questions. So just being in that student role, you know, at the same time as being in a mentor role, but, you know, being able to ask those guys questions and get feedback. So I think, you know, it's a good situation for me overall. Paul Kaharski. Hey, even with Logan Ryan leaving, uh, DBs probably have the best leadership before before you arrive. And how do you kind of figure out your place in that with Byard and Vaccaro and and uh, and Adoree and Malcolm? Um, I think just like I said before, kind of fit in with need be, but at the same time, just be myself. You know, I'm not coming in here to look to replace anybody or do anything or be the savior or none of that. You know, I'm just coming in here to be, you know, whatever my job is, whatever my role is, to do that to the utmost. And I think, um, obviously, Logan was a great player for those guys, so I don't want to get into comparisons. But, you know, when I see something where I need to speak up or give some input or help guys here and there, that would always be me, you know, at any point of my life. So I think that's just a natural for me. So anytime I'm able to give information back and be helpful, it's only right. You know, whether it's a defensive back or whether it's a young guy on the wide receivers, other side of the field, or if it's a quarterback, I think that's what makes you really good as a football team as a uh, group when you have guys that's able to give each other information and feedback, what you've seen on this particular route or what did you expect, things like that. So uh, when you get into the game, everybody's clicking on the same page. Vrabel was talking about the slot as a more vertical position than it used to be. Uh, how does Jonathan Joseph at this stage of his career view himself in terms of uh, a slot contributor? Oh, uh, you know, for me, uh, I'm just like I said, we haven't even got that far. And I'm not even really coming in here with any expectations or anything like that because, you know, obviously you look at this team, they got to the AFC title uh, game last year. And, you know, for me, I don't want to come in here and be the guy that's looking to fill some void or do something that's not asked of me. You know, my role is to come in and do what's asked of me and whatever that be when the time comes, you know, I'll be ready for that role. Uh, Johnny Franks. Good afternoon, Jonathan. Uh, as your career has progressed, how has your preparation changed to keep your mind and body sharp for an upcoming season? I think um, just being able to go out and just compete with the younger guys, you know, whether it's in your training session, uh, just your preparation, just whatever it may be, just always having that mentality. Anytime you have a chance to be out there and wear the NFL shield, that it's a privilege and don't take it for granted. So, you know, you don't want to come back out of shape or you don't want to put yourself in a position to where you can't do your job or be available for your team. So I just always take that approach to everything that I do. And I think, you know, it's been working for me. And there's always room to learn things, you know, being over here with a different set of group of guys, the way they use their terminology, the way they see things, the way they approach things, you know, you can never get too old to learn different things. You know, those things that I learned today in the meeting, in the Zoom meet that I heard um, Kenny Vaccaro say that he used in a technique. And when I seen it, it made perfect sense to me, but I never heard it before. But it's something that I will always remember. Rob, I think you're on mute. I'm on mute. No, Rob, Robbie is. Uh -oh. oh, sorry about that. Uh, John Burton. Sorry. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Thanks, Robbie. And uh, hello to everybody on this uh, chat. I hope to see you soon. I hope everybody's doing well. Jonathan, welcome to the Titans. Just curious, kind of along the lines of what you've been saying. Um, you know, you look at a guy like Brady playing quarterback into his 40s, Frank Gore playing running back still at 37, you still playing at a high level at 36, you know, three guys playing three very demanding positions. How much pride do you take to still be able to, you know, at an older age, still be able to to play, you know, NFL football at a high level? I take a lot of pride in it, you know, just because, you know, um, it's a blessing, you know, at the same time. So, you know, anything that's at this point stage in my career, it's not a given. You know, you have to work for it and still go and put in the work. And I enjoy it. That's the best part about football is the grind. You know, when you get out there and playing the games on Sunday and all that, that's fun. But, you know, the off season, the build up and everything else, that's the grind. But, you know, ever since a young age, when I've been back in high school, you know, I've been having that mentality and it's carried me throughout the way. And it's kind of made just the NFL life for me, honestly, 
a little easier because I never looked at it like, oh man, I have to go work or do this. It's just been a part of my process and my thought mentality. So um, for me, it's um, just easy. Just go out there, man, and just push yourself and your body will let you know when you need to cut back on it, certain things, and just listen to your body. Thanks. Uh, Corey Curtis. Hey, Jonathan, congratulations. My Gamecock wife is very excited to have you in town. Um, wanted to ask you about another Gamecock and another Rock Hill native. Uh, I, I understand you and Jadavion Clowney are really close. Can you just talk about the, the level of your relationship and, and your friendship? Oh, yeah, we obviously from the same hometown, you know, both Gamecock alumni. Um, I'm a lot older than him, but, you know, he's a Rock Hill legend, and um, I've been knowing him for his whole life, basically, and he's a great friend of mine. You know, obviously, you know, you get in this league, everybody's, you know, their own individual, make their own decisions. You know, he's obviously a free agent, things like that. So, um, you know, I just kind of stand back, you know, and um, if advice is asked from me, I would give my input. But other than that, you know, you have to let everyone make their own decisions because when you put that jersey on and go out there on that field, you have to live with, you know, everything that comes with it. You'd rather have them with you than against you, though, wouldn't you? Oh, any day of the week. You do. Uh, you know, that's not even uh, up for a question. Any, any day of the week, you know, he's a guy that you'll love to have with you fighting in your corner no matter what you're doing just because that's his mentality. Uh, Mike Giardi. Todd, thanks for doing this. Uh, my question for you is just, you spent so much time in the division. How much of a priority was it for you to stay in the division? And, you know, with a side benefit, maybe you get a couple cracks a year at Houston. <laughs> I think uh, it, was, it wasn't it was important until, you know, I started to really think about it, you know, because obviously I had a few other teams um, talking and interested, you know, made offers and things like that. But I think just being familiar with, you know, the teams in the division, the wide receivers, the offensive coordinators, just, you know, the way things operate in this division. Um, obviously, having a chance to come to a team that's been, you know, contending, you know, the last few years and on the rise, I think um, that plays a lot into it. You know, being closer to home. Um, my wife is from Nashville, Tennessee, so that played a lot into it. And just having a lot of people over there, you know, everything that I asked about, you know, the Tennessee Titans was great positive feedback. And um, I think that just made it that much more easier of a decision for me to make. Uh, Chris Harris. Hey, Jonathan, welcome to Nashville when you get here. Um, <laughs> give, uh, the NFL schedule is coming out tonight, obviously, and given how ambiguous everything is right now with the offseason and, and stuff going forward, how does that maybe provide like something definitive and a goal to, to work towards, given everything that's unknown right now? Um, you know, as a player, you have to always stay ready. You know, you can't take it for granted. You know, I remember being a player back in 2011, I think, when uh, we had the lockout. And, you know, there's a lot of guys, you know, some guys kind of relaxing, some guys taking it easy, playing it out by ear. And, you know, some guys still going full throttle and working out as usual. And I think that's the approach you have to take because you don't want to be that guy that things come up and move a little quicker because being a part of the NFL is always constant change. Nothing is never set in stone. You have to take that approach with everything that you're doing. So you would rather be ready and then something doesn't happen, then something happens and not be ready. Thank you, sir. Uh, John Glennon. Hey Jonathan, uh, congrats on your uh, on your deal. Um, wondering what you know about the uh, the Titans corners here. Um, you know Dory and, and Malcolm, and and even with the um, the draft pick uh, Christian Fulton coming in, I wonder if you've uh, researched him at all or gotten to see some some clips on him. I was seeing the rookie. You know, I seen uh, his highlights. You know, um, thank you, big great player. I think you know any rookie coming in, you don't want to put expectations on those guys. You want to let them just come in and learn and figure out being an NFL player and a professional and all those things before you even think about what he can do for you on the field. Obviously, you know, that comes with being a draft pick, so you want him to go out there and perform. So I think in due time, you know, however it plays out, he'll be fine and okay. And I think, you know, Malcolm and Dory, both of those guys, play great football over, you know, however long of their careers. And, you know, they're still relatively young and learning and getting better. And I think, you know, just having me over here with Milton and the rest of those guys in the room, I think it's always something that you can learn, always get better. And I think those guys are eager to do all those things and, you know, make a name for themselves throughout the league as well, you know, from a unit, not just individuals. Uh, David Beauclair. Hey, Jonathan, I'm curious. You're close to 200 career passes defensed. Is that a significant milestone to you? And, uh, and how many more interceptions do you feel like you could have had along the way? 
Oh, uh, in my career, interceptions, man. I probably dropped about 35, 40. Oh, man, interceptions. I dropped 10 my rookie year. Uh, I had like 20 some pass breakups, but 10 of those were dropped interceptions, like two hands on the ball. But I've dropped, you know, on record, it's not just, you know, one of those ones you think you can have, like two hands on the ball, at least 30 to 35 interceptions, without a doubt. And as you know, it's part of those things, playing in a man, a heavy man to man scheme throughout my whole career. It's like the hardest thing is in man to man is to, you know, play the man in, turn around and find the ball. So you look at a lot of times like that, but um, that's part of football. I think, you know, just being a ball disruptor in general, you know, um, that's what I've been able to do. Um, the record is just part of the thing that's came with my career throughout. Just me just being consistent. It's not something that I set out just to chase. I think I've always been a corner to where, you know, obviously you never want your guy to catch the ball. So I think um, I was born and raised up in, you know, when I was in Cincinnati as a youngster, I always play each and every play as the ball was coming to your guy. And I think, you know, playing the right discipline football, making guys earn each and every yard, and doing all those things helped me throughout the, uh, my career just to get my hands on more and more balls. Uh, Luke? Glennon got my question. I'm good. Okay. Uh, just a couple of follow-up questions, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, Corey, I think, had a follow-up. Yeah, Jonathan, um, I know the league is planning on trying to get people back um, in buildings here soon. It came out last night, and I know the players' union is talking with ownership. What would you like to see in place uh, before players get back into training facilities? I think um, the NFL, however they would handle it, I think they would never put the players in a position to where we're in jeopardy or anything like that. So I think when we get to that stage, I think they would have everything in place to where the players wouldn't have to worry about anything just because I think, you know, all those guys in the higher ups, that's what they're doing behind the scenes and all those things, I think. So when we get to that place, I don't think there's anything for the players to have to worry about, honestly. All right, last two. Uh, Teron, how to follow up? Jonathan, coming into the league, you were a 4-3 guy. Obviously, you know, a, a bit of that speed may have eroded. How has your game evolved, whereas you're still a solid cover corner that doesn't have to rely on speed? I think, um, you know, coming into the league as a speed guy, you know, 4-3 guy, you know, that got pinned to my name a lot just because I didn't play as many college games. You know, I was only like 12 career college games or something. But I think, you know, over my career, I've defined my game to be more of a technician. I've studied a lot and took my mental aspect of the game to the next level to where you can slow the game down and you can anticipate things. You can have a feel for routes and all those things. I think running is just a thing that's kind of like, you know, it's almost misled in a way because I haven't ran 40, honestly. I've ran a 40 to train, but I haven't timed myself in a 40 since I ran the 40 at the combine. If I had to run it, probably run, I can run a 4-3, not a 4-3-1, obviously, but, you know, it's only 40 yards. You're only running it one time. But I think football is about understanding when to run and when not to run, you know, not when to not panic and not panic and all those things. So I think the more you're able to take your mental aspect and understand and anticipate those things, I think that can help you when you're losing a step, you know, late in your career and things like that without seeing, you know, Champ Bailey, all those other guys, Rondé Barber, any other guy that's played well up into his 30s through throughout their years. Uh, so we're going to take the last question here, but everyone can stay on the line. Um, ben is actually going to join this call, the same call, and when he gets in the waiting room, I'll go ahead and let him in and we'll start up with him um, so you can stay on the line. So. Last question is uh, a follow-up from Jim. Jim Wyatt, you out there? Yeah, Jonathan, I was just following up. You said your wife is from Nashville. I was just curious, did she, did she go to school here? How'd you guys meet? I was, I was more interested, just that Nashville connection. Yeah, uh, we met in Cincinnati when I was a rookie in Cincinnati. Um, she went to TSU, so um, obviously I think she has some friends in Cincinnati. It's a little short distance, a little short drive up. So um, we actually met there and, you know, stayed in contact and dated for a while. Then we kind of made it official. And um, I think she went to Hillsborough High School there. All right. I appreciate your time, Jonathan, and uh, we'll let you roll on that. And uh, look forward to seeing you here in Nashville. Thank you. Oh, no problem. Thank, Thank you, guys. you. No problem. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. No problem. Thank you.